Stephan ABC News Special Report. Now reporting, George Stephanopoulos. Good afternoon. We're coming on the air right now because President Trump is about to appear in the Rose Garden. There you see him with the President and of the I European Commission, Jean-Claude Juncker, expected to announce it's a trade deal. So many of our representatives for being here. Senator John Bozeman. John, you're here someplace. Hi, John. Thank you. Senator Mike Crapo. Thank you, Mike. Senator Steve Daines. Senator Hoven. Thank you. They're all here. Senator Cindy Hyde-Smith. Cindy, thank you very much. Senator James Lankford. James. Thank you, James. Senator Pat Roberts. He loves those farms. He loves the farmers like I do. Representative Diane Black. Diane, thank you. Representative Kevin Brady with our new tax bill. How's it coming, Kevin? Good. Representative Mike Conaway. Mike. Thank you, Mike. Representative Dan Newhouse. Thank you, Dan. Representative Christy Norm. I have to call her governor now. That was a great win. Thank you, Christy. Representative David Reichert. David, thank you. So we had a big day, very big. We met right here at the White House to launch a new phase in the relationship between the United States and the European Union, a phase of close friendship, of strong trade relations in which both of us will win, of working better together for global security and prosperity, and of fighting jointly against terrorism. The United States and the European Union together count for more than 830 million citizens and more than 50 percent of the global GDP. In other words, together, we're more than 50 percent of trade. If we team up, we can make our planet a better, more secure, and more prosperous place. Already today, the United States and the European Union have a $1 trillion bilateral trade relationship, the largest economic relationship anywhere in the world. We want to further strengthen this trade relationship to the benefit of all American and European citizens. This is why we agreed today, first of all, to work together towards zero tariffs, zero non-tariff barriers, and zero subsidies on non-auto industrial goods. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We will also work to reduce barriers and increase trade in services, chemicals, pharmaceuticals, medical products, as well as soybeans. Soybeans is a big deal. And the European Union is going to start almost immediately to buy a lot of soybeans. They're a tremendous market. Buy a lot of soybeans from our farmers in the Midwest, primarily. So I thank you for that, John Claude. This will open markets for farmers and workers, increase investment, and lead to greater prosperity in both the United States and the European Union. It will also make trade fairer and more reciprocal, my favorite word, reciprocal. Secondly, we agreed to a strengthen and strengthening of our strategic cooperation with respect to energy. The European Union wants to import more liquefied natural gas, LNG, from the United States, and they're going to be a very, very big buyer. We're going to make it much easier for them, but they're going to be a massive buyer of LNG so they'll be able to diversify their energy supply, which they want very much to do, and we have plenty of it. Thirdly, we agreed today to launch a close dialogue on standards in order to ease trade, reduce bureaucratic obstacles, and slash costs dramatically. Fourthly, we agreed to join forces to protect American and European companies from better and really better than ever we've, we've never done like we're doing, I can say, from the standpoint of the United States, 
We've never done this well, but we're going to do a lot better after we do this deal and other deals that we're currently working on. Likewise, the European Union is going to do better, stronger, bigger. We will therefore work closely together with like-minded partners to reform the WTO and to address unfair trading practices, including intellectual property theft, forced technology transfer, industrial subsidies, distortions created by state-owned enterprises, and overcapacity. We decided to set up immediately an executive working group of very intelligent people on both sides. They'll be our closest advisors, and they're going to carry out this joint agenda. In addition, it will identify short-term measures to facilitate commercial exchanges and assess existing tariff measures and what we can do about that to the betterment of both. While we are working on this, we will not go against the spirit of this agreement unless either party terminates the negotiation. So we're starting the negotiation right now, but we know very much where it's going. We also will resolve the steel and aluminum tariff issues, and we will resolve retaliatory tariffs. We have some tariffs that are retaliatory, and that will get resolved as part of what we're doing. And with that, Jean-Claude, please. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, when I was invited uh, by the President to the White House, I had one intention. I had the intention to make a deal today, and we made a deal uh, today. We have identified a number of areas on which to work together. Work towards zero tariffs on industrial goods. That was my main intention, to propose to come down to zero tariffs on industrial goods. We've decided to strengthen our cooperation on energy. The EU will build more terminals to import liquefied natural gas from the US. This is also a message for others. We agreed to establish a dialogue on standards. As far as agriculture is concerned, the European Union can import more so soybeans from the US and it will be done. And we also agreed to work together on the reform of the WTA. This, of course, is uh, on the understanding that uh, as long as we are negotiating, unless one party would stop the negotiations, we hold off further tariffs and we reassess existing tariffs on steel and aluminium. This was a good, a constructive meeting. Thank you, Donald. Oh, well, thank you very much, uh, Jean-Claude. And I just want to conclude by saying this was a very big day for free and fair trade. Very big day indeed. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Here you have it. President Trump and the President of the European Commission, Jean-Claude Juncker, announcing that they've reached some agreement on how to go forward on trade. I want to bring in Terry Moran, who's at the White House. Terry, listening to both leaders right there, what it sounds like is actually a de-escalation uh, uh, agreement. Not a lot of concrete measures uh, announced by either president, although the Europeans said they're going to be buying more soybeans, but they're basically going to hold off on new tariffs and escalation in the trade war as they talk about figuring out some way to get to zero tariffs and a new trading relationship. That's right. This is a, uh, uh, as you say, it's, it's an aspirational deal. They agreed to begin negotiations and work together towards uh, a regime of no tariffs on industrial goods between the United States and Europe. That's what triggered this, remember. What, what made President Trump angry was that uh, the steel and aluminum protectionist measures in Europe, he believed were hurting the industrial core of the United States, uh, which supported him and which he wanted to deliver something to. And uh, that, at least, is what has begun here. I'll tell you, stop, there's no question that Wall Street is relieved because the prospect of yet another trade war. Remember, President Trump has one ongoing right now with China. 
uh, one with Canada and Mexico seems to be in the offing, uh, and there was one certainly cooking between the United States and Europe. The, the, the relief of that pressure sent the stock market uh, skyrocketing today because this is something we haven't seen from President Trump. He's, he's willing to back down a little bit uh, on his punitive protectionist agenda and at least agree to talk. Yeah, it went up about 150 points after word of the potential agreement leaked. I want to bring in Tara Paul Mary as well in Washington, but has also spent a lot of time uh, covering the European Commission, the European Union. What a difference a couple of weeks makes. Tara, the president was in Europe about 10 days ago calling the European Union a foe. Yep, that's right, George. And Jean-Claude Juncker came to town ready to make a deal. But yesterday, when I spoke with U.S. officials, they seemed reluctant that his plan, which was to either offer a smaller trade deal on just industrial products or get rid of tariffs altogether on cars, would actually be something that the president would take to and be interested in. And it sounds like he is, because he's been very adamant about saying he doesn't want tariffs, tariff barriers, or subsidies. But it seems that he was able to make some sort of deal to de escalate and and eventually what they really wanted was for him to come home saying that there will be no tariffs on cars. Uh, the German car makers were really nervous about that and they wanted to make sure that President Trump didn't follow through and place a 25 percent tariff on that. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a real change uh, from last week and we'll see where this actually leads to. As we know, the, the U.S. and the European Union before President Trump took office was working on a really broad transatlantic uh, trade agreement and that fell apart. That was one of the first things that President Trump pulled out of when he became president. Okay, Tara, thanks. But for now, no new tariffs. President Trump calls it a big day at the White House announcing new trade talks with the European